Good day, audience. My name is Bill Hopgood, project manager for the IT public safety team at the city of Richmond, Virginia. Joining us today is Anita Ostrowski, vice president of Central Station Services for Vector Security. Anita is based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Anita, say hello. Hello. Today we are going to demonstrate the effectiveness and efficiency of the ASAP program. I am currently attached to a live computer-aided dispatch or CAD workstation at the City of Richmond's primary public safety answering point, also known as 911 PSAP or Emergency Communications Center. On this workstation, we can see some of the windows that telecommunicators use to perform their work. Included on this monitor are an event information window used to display details about a call for service, a pending events window used to list calls for service in queue awaiting dispatch, a unit resource window, and a map window. I will play the role of the telecommunicator assigned to dispatch police incidents for police precinct number two. In the role of alarm central station operator, Anita will now initiate a burger alarm notification to the Richmond PSAP. The CAD system will receive the message, verify that the address is a valid city of Richmond address, that the event type is a valid event type, and generate a call for service by adding an entry to the pending events window where my cursor is in priority order. The CAD system will then send a response back to the alarm central station letting them know that a call for service has been generated. We see that Anita just sent us the alarm signal to 3516 North Hopkins Road. And before anybody else dispatches this, I'm going to go ahead and dispatch it to Unit 913. Uh, Anita, did you receive the accept message from Richmond? Yes, I received the accept message. Okay. And I did dispatch a police unit on the event. Did you receive a CAD update message from Richmond, and what did it tell you? Um, yes, I received the update, and it says police has been dispatched. Okay. Now, the event information window uh, contains placeholders for the location, the type of an event, uh, also the, the complainant's name, which in this case is the alarm company and their telephone number. Um, and any information that uh, there's not a placeholder for will appear in the remarks window where I'm scrolling. Uh, we, we see the full address, uh, also whether the alarm is audible or silent. Uh, exactly where was the trigger point for the alarm, uh, the alarm operator's uh, name, ID, and also the uh, central station ID, any directions to the facility, and uh, perhaps a description of what the facility looks like, in this case a three-story brown brick building. So 913 wasn't very far away on this call, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark 913 arrived on the scene. Uh, and we can see in the map not only the outline of the premises, but we also now see that 913 is there. Uh, Anita, did you receive a message that the police have arrived? Yes, I received the message. And the message says, get off my window here, that police is on scene. Okay, very good. So in this scenario, the police have checked the outside perimeter of the structure. We can find no signs of force entry or any unsecured doors or windows. A key holder will need to respond to allow the police to search the interior. The telecommunicator assigned to the dispatch channel or even the police officer from their mobile data computer, also called an MDC, can initiate a message to the alarm operator, as I will now demonstrate. So we go to this area right here. And I just entered the question, premises is secure, please provide an ETA for the key holder. And now I'm sending uh, that message to Anita, which she should already have. And Anita, did you receive that message I sent? I did receive a message. This so premise is secure, please provide an ETA for the key holder. Okay, and now Anita is going to prepare a response to that question and then return it back to me. I sent back my response. Okay. Right, 
And we have a response back that Mary Brown is ETA uh, in 15 minutes. And you see that that stands out in a different color and is bold. And if there's any need for the alarm company to send us additional information, that's, this is exactly how it would appear, such as we verify that there's an actual crime in progress or uh, a request to cancel. But once the keyholder has arrived and the building has been searched and the premises declared secure, the police officer will clear from the event and report a disposition. Once the last officer clears, the CAD system will send a message back to the alarm central station declaring that the event has been closed and will report the disposition back to the alarm company if the disposition is available. So I'm going to clear unit 913 from this event and I'm going to use uh, I'm going to enter a disposition code and we're going to let Anita tell us what I entered. So Anita you should get a CAD update message back letting you know that the event has been closed and I'd like for you to tell us what disposition I used. I did receive the update and it says no cause for activation found. Very good. I do want to point out that the ASAP program is based on an American national standard, is non-vendor specific, and can be incorporated into any CAD system provided that the CAD provider has developed a solution. The published standard is available by going to APCO's website at apcointl.org and then navigating to the standards and APCO standards for download link. This completes the demonstration. Thank you for joining us today.